everyone. Um, thank you for the presentation uh, of me. And uh, today we're going to talk about this case of how to run software without having a QA department. And it's actually pretty interesting because that's not obvious which approaches can be used. And I hope you stay excited and wait till the end of my presentation. Uh, so first, I have a question. Does everyone know what Zalando is or there is someone who doesn't know the company? Everyone knows? Oh, that's a great sign, actually. <laughs> but I'm still going to talk a little bit about the company. Well, Zalando is a seller of clothes. They sell clothes online and they sell in Europe in 25 countries. And our GMV is 4.6 billion euros, which is quite a lot. And we have about 50 million of active customers, which makes a project quite exciting to work in. We do have uh, tech offices in Zalando and one of them in Helsinki, actually just on the other side of the road. But there's also offices in Berlin, uh, Germany, Dublin, Zurich, and now Sweden. And um, I'm myself an iOS engineer uh, in Zalando. I started there as an intern and then continued as a full-time software engineer. Even though I majored in smart IoT by my studies, but I like iOS and that's what I'm enjoying to do professionally. Um, so now let's talk about the topics that we are supposed to talk today. And uh, what is the typical QA? I maybe ask you guys, what is a typical QA for you? Can anyone answer? I see some love. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to me, uh, the QA uh, should be the one who ensure the quality of the application that we deliver. Sounds very nice. And there was also one hand over there. Uh, someone that knows the whole product very well so that they can test everything well. That's great answer. Thank you so much. Anyone else want to say? Uh, the stereotype is uh, testing the app, breaking the app, but we don't see that much because it's expected devs do that. Okay, thank you. And one more hand. <laughs> Yeah, we um, find bugs and annoy the developers. <laughs> I love that answer. Thank you so much. Well, um, typically the QA is, there, uh, is associated with testing the software product. It is a manual or automatic. Um, QA people create test plans and detailed uh, taste cases. Um, they make um, tests, they run them and report the defects. And there is a lot of benefits of having actually a QA team because then you are sure that you have a high quality product. You are sure that in production there is no bad um, software that is not tasted and that the software is basically working. So as for me, it makes total sense to have a QA team and to save money for the company on post fixes. But in case of Zalando, we are doing a little bit different. And before I start talking about that, I want to tell about a little bit of evolution of software development and how did we come to the point when we realized that we actually need a QA. So software development started to appear in 1950s when it has been just a brand new and nobody, not so many people knew about it. At that time, Software was written ma mainly for military purposes and basically the same person wrote the code and maintained it and tested it, of course. Um, in 60s, the software development started to develop quite a lot and started to be more complex and there appeared to be a first structure of the code. Um, there's been a tendency to break code into small modules and the languages such as C, Fortran and COBOL appeared. In 70s, the, um, we started to come even bigger and there has been approach of waterfall. Is anyone familiar with waterfall approach? Yes, what does that mean for you? <laughs> Uh, 
and starts and then so the waterfall approach is considered like uh, the requirements are set before the development starts and then the development starts in the Pretty much not, not many uh, changes can be made to the requirements. And then the testing starts uh, once the product is uh, finalized and after the delivery, that's, that's, that's the waterfall approach in, in, in summary, but there are many iterations on, on it. So it's not always set in stone. Yeah, that's a great answer. Thank you so much. Well, you're right. And I agree with that, that waterfall model is basically when you cannot start doing the next phase of software development before you completed the previous one. So first you do design and development and testing and so on. Then we come into 80s uh, when um, the first objective language start to appear. And actually in 80s, we have such languages that are still used even today. For example, C++, Java, and Python. Has, is anyone familiar with these names? Can you imagine they have appeared already almost more than 40 years ago? Isn't it amazing? And um, in 90s, uh, people start to realize that waterfall model uh, is actually having some disadvantages because it's not so flexible. When we faced that there is so much software being developed and so many changes are actually needed, then waterfall model appeared to have some disadvantages. And people start to think what could we have that could be more flexible and that could be adjusted to the customer needs. And then uh, people came up with an agile approach which appeared to be flexible and um, where you basically could have some changes if they are needed. And it's actually very great because you don't have to redo stuff from zero. You can adjust it anytime in any process of software development. And I personally like it so much. And key methodologies are Scrum and Kanban and extreme programming. In 2010, um, the DevOps culture starts to take place. It undermines uh, the collaboration between development and operation teams to automate streamline software development processes and microservices come in place. Um, and I, I see there a very great history line. So to sum up, the modern practices are um, Agile and DevOps, which basically means a collaboration through Kanban and Scrum. And another one is a shift left testing, where you basically um, make uh, developers responsible for quality from the beginning. Uh, the concept uh, starts that um, um, the concept of testing is where uh, testing starts actually from development of software. And when you're just designing something, you already start to question, is it possible? Is it not possible? And um, if something that, for example, product people come up with is not possible, then you just start to question it and start adjusting it. And tests uh, are done continuously. So what tools and technologies are used in order to make it? Well, first of all, is automated testing. Um, it includes unit testing, integration testing, um, functional performance testing, security and end-to-end -end testing, and continuous integration and continuous deployment. So tests don't need uh, to be manual and these instruments uh, take the tasks of the QA department and they can be delegated to the automation and partly to developers. So actually, I want to come to points, to the point that with a possibility of automation and approach where you can always adjust everything, there is also benefits of working without the QA department. First of all, um, the development can be done faster because when you do something and you don't give your task, uh, your feature for a month for the QA department, you can release things faster. Also, you save the money on having an extra staff at the company. You give the responsibility to developers so that they can make higher quality code from the beginning and 
My favorite point over there is that there is a very improved collaboration in a team because when there is higher responsibility, there is a higher collaboration. And I'm going to explain my presentation based on the case of Zalando Lounge. Is anyone familiar with this app? For those who are not, um, there are the QR codes so that you can download the apps. I have links for both Android and iOS. And this app has been done without the QA department. So feel free to find some bugs over there and report them to me. <laughs> Just a couple words about the Lando Lounge project. It's a pretty big project. It's also an e-commerce shop where you can buy clothes um, and brand um, items with very high discounts, like 60, 70 percent. I love that. Uh, we do sell premium brands and provide um, inclusive experience and representative conduct for the customers. The whole app is built without the QA and it makes it a very interesting case in terms of engineering. How do we do everything without the QA? Well, first of all, we do have automated testing and we do have the CI CD pipelines. Um, and the most important in our case is developer responsibility. So developers take ownership of the quality and we have also tried to involve as many people in testing as we can. So in our case, product people, analytics, they also uh, participate in bug bashes and try to test our product before we release it to the Apple Store. I need to say that it's actually not easy to do it that way and we have faced some challenges. The first, the first challenge that we did face doing that is that not every developer is ready to transition to work in a non-QA mode. And that was difficult also because we do have a lot of senior engineers, so they do have their own approach of working, they do have their own habits and transition wasn't always easy for everyone. Um, also, we need um, our engineers to be able to run the automated tests and unit tests, uh, which adds them the responsibility and they have to have more skills, maybe than in other companies. And also developers um, have the responsibility of having bug bashes and testing software before releasing it. However, The case has been quite successful. And if we look um, at the Apple Store, uh, we have ratings of more than 100,000 people. 182,000 people have rated our apps and we got a review which is 4.9 stars in Apple Store, which underlines that we are doing actually a very high quality software without having a QA department. So what have we learned in our case by doing that and using this non-QA approach? Well, first of all, we have developed a culture of quality. We cannot just do something in a bad quality just so that it works. The code has to be good from the beginning. Uh, second of all, our engineers understand the importance of training and upgrading their skills. And that's why there is always um, education that is actually a part of our job. And finally, the practice that we are using at Zalando is uh, constant feedback loops for continuous development. I need to say that... Um, if more companies switch to non-QA model, then basically will change the industry of software engineering and it will affect the job market requirements for the engineers. So there will be a higher responsibility and ownership for engineers and they will have to also deal with testing QA um, and be able to run the automated tests e and understand the ICD pipeline, which adds up more to their responsibilities. 
Um, I would say that's it from my side. 